Originally opened in 1980, Kevin and Rita Brown both coached numerous athletes that went on to national and Olympic teams, including Brandy Johnson and Wendy Bruce. Rita Brown graduated from the University of Florida and married Kevin Brown shortly after graduating. Since opening the gym, they have trained gymnasts who have qualified for 1988, 1992, 1996, and 2004 Olympics. Rita Brown describes herself as the kind of person who's a perfectionist in what I do. I want to offer the best in the world at gymnastics. Many people have spoken highly of them over the years of the two. Geza Pojar stated back in the 90s, I think Reed is one of the best, if not the best businesswoman in gymnastics. He used to work for the Browns in the past. There are mixed emotions, though. I think Reed is a very shrewd businesswoman. I think she'll do whatever it takes to get what she wants, says Kathy Johnson, mother of Olympian Brandy Johnson. Known for Rita's aggressive business style and Kevin's aggressive coaching style, they still made things work. Kevin was known as the main coach, while Rita was known as the one running the gym. Kevin got majority of the coaching credit. Kevin was a very dedicated coach. His first success, Brandy, would go on to the 88 Olympics. Brandy would train at Brown's Gymnastics leading up to the Olympics before going to Carolis. She would spend a short amount of time there before getting drained and tired of Carolis' grueling 10-hour practices and would shortly after move back to the Browns. Caroli called Brandy's mother, Kathy, after leaving his gym and inquired about her returning to the gym, asking that Brandy call him back. Brandy refused, saying that she did not want to tell people I called him. And in the intercom, Caroli once quoted, saying that he was discounting Johnson's chances in the next Olympics, saying, 1992 belongs to the young ones only. He took one step too far with his tactics, Kevin Brown said. He's gone too far with me and with all the other coaches in the U.S. He doesn't care about anyone but himself. After the 88 Olympics, Wendy Bruce would step into the spotlight for the 92 Olympics. Wendy would move to the Browns after seeing Brandy's success. Wendy, who was constantly compared to herself with Brandy, was also treated the same as Brandy. Wendy would write a short story credited her success with Kevin after the years from the 1992 Olympics, titled The First Hug. It states, back in 1992, we had to compete eight routines. The entire team had to compete compulsories on all four events and optionals on all four events. Luckily, during compulsories, we were allowed to have our own coaches on the floor, but for optionals, USA Gymnastics had to pick one head coach and one assistant coach for our team. They picked Bella Caroli and Steve Nuno. I knew Mr. Brown, my coach, wasn't going to be picked as the head or assistant coach for the team because it was customary to have the number one and two gymnasts have their coaches. I was number six on the team. Vault was by far my best event, but I hated vault. Mr. Brown was like my security blanket on vault. Just his presence standing next to me on the vault gave me confidence. But for the most important competition of our lives, he wasn't allowed to be there for me. I didn't have a good warm-up. I would throw my vault. I think that Steve and Bella were getting worried about me, but I felt lonely and scared without Mr. Brown. When warm-up was over, I wasn't allowed to walk over to Mr. Brown. I had to stay with the team. I glanced his way, and he gave me a look. He pumped his fists into the air, and mouthed the words, you got this. I shook my head and agreed. For if anyone knew what I was capable of, it was Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown and I had spent five years together. He was the one who woke up early and stayed late to train with me. He was the one who conditioned me to be strong enough to be an Olympian. He was the one who spent more time with me than his own family. He was the one who stayed up late at night worrying about me. My second vault was even better than my first. Everyone erupted in cheer. Steve yelled and cheered. Bella jumped up and down. And after I presented to the judges, I turned around and I started to run. I ran down the podium stairs. I ran past Steve and I ran past Bella. I ran past my team. I ran all the way to the end of the arena and right into the arms of my coach. 
and in that final moment, when I could have stopped and gave Steve, Bella, or my teammates the first hug, something inside me knew that Mr. Brown had earned the first hug. He was the one by my side. He was the one who made me an Olympian. He was the one that always wanted me to do well. He was the one that never gave up on me. He was my biggest supporter, my biggest fan, and he was the one who deserved it. Wendy Bruce said she's still intimidated by Rita, though. We've always been really scared of her. Whenever she came into the gym, our hearts would beat fast, Bruce said. But Bruce, who lived with the Browns for a year, also said that Rita and Kevin showed great kindness. Sometimes they picked up hotel or restaurant bills because they knew her family couldn't afford it. I feel that I could never really repay them for everything they've done for me, Bruce said. During the Olympic trials in 1992, Bruce fell off the balance beam, jeopardizing her chances of making the American team. Rita described in that moment, basically, in her mind, she thought it was over. She and Kevin, both their faces were drained, Rita said. I pulled her aside, and I said, young lady, this is not over. You can do this. What you must do is the best floor routine of your life. Come on, finish strong. And she did, said Bruce. She kept pushing me and pushing me and told me I could do it, to calm down. She was my brain. And I think that without her, I may not have done it. The Browns were very dedicated to their athletes. Once, Rita was quoted by saying that she had over four athletes living in her home to help with the costs. I treat every child as if they were my own child. I treat them with respect, and the same goes for their parents. I believe they deserve the best in gymnastics instruction, in the most positive atmosphere. Kevin stuck up for his athletes, and Rita pushed to further their success. Kevin helped his athletes mentally and emotionally, while Rita helped the parents financially. Kevin showed more of a soft heart, whereas Rita was known as a strict businesswoman. A parent in the 1990s described Rita as kind and loving, but also very cold in the gym. I know there's a lot of people who don't like Rita, because many people don't like aggressive women. Very focused on a business standpoint, an early 1990 article focuses on the expansion of another gym. We'll be the largest training center in the world for gymnastics. I want it to be an international facility to house the next Olympic team. In this article, Rita is focused more on status than gymnasts. A parent from the gym stated, Rita is really good at promoting the gym and raising funds, but it can be extremely difficult to get her to take the time to talk to parents. If not for me, we would not have had Olympians in the past. They say behind every successful man, there's a woman pushing, and I pushed. We lived my dream. I think times could have changed though with Rita and how small amounts of people perceive her in a negative light. Life events can shape and mold somebody. And in 1993, Kevin and Rita would divorce. The property would go on to Rita, Kevin originally being a part-time owner. And with the divorce, Kevin would actually move to Cincinnati and coach Amanda Borden at Mary Lee Tracy's gym, Cincinnati Gymnastics Academy, or CGA. The success of Browns is very important to me, emotionally and financially. I put my heart and soul into developing the elite level. It is difficult for me to leave Orlando because there are a lot of relationships I will miss. My goals are for the elite athletes to do their best without me, but my plans are not to recruit them to follow me. Parents state that once Kevin left, things changed, and Rita became more involved with the coaching process than before. In 2000, Rita's daughter would pass away in a car collision. She was only in middle school. She's not doing well, a close friend and coach at Brown stated in a news report. To this day, I haven't seen any elites at Browns. I wonder if these events have changed Rita's personality, and if she is still more focused on status rather than gymnastics. I don't think so. But regardless, I don't think there were toxic coaches, unlike some of the other ones I've discussed. Rita has published over 11 books on coaching and safety awareness, and she now promotes healthy coaching and reduces injury. Kevin may be coaching at another gym called TAGS, which is based in Minnesota. 
I am not discussing Reed and Kevin by saying that they are bad coaches, but I'm adding them into my list of elite coaches since I will have discussed almost all coaches from this era.